really gets a lot of mileage out of that tipping his hat thing, doesn't he? Oh, come on! That's not magic! He just switched flowers between edits! How lame is... I mean, that's not even challenging to spot! Fucking anyone could do that! And then he does this thing where he turns a rose petal into blood, but the paint on the rose is so obvious, I'm amazed there weren't kids heckling this asshole from the audience. Adam, have you seen the magician? The guy is unbelievable. I know, he fucking sucks! Oh my god, this guy is a freaking sorcerer. How do he do that? Does this even qualify as trick photography? Why even bother writing a stage magician character in the script in the first place if nobody in the cast could perform even the simplest of magic tricks? They couldn't just shell out a hundred bucks and hire an actual party magician to get in front of the camera and do his act for an hour? I mean, they just had to make stuff appear between edits? Geez, my dad doing the coin behind the ear routine or the detachable thumb trick would have blown the roof off that place. to watch a lame medieval themed play where Adam is asked to fill in for an actor who no-showed the performance. And I can't say I blame the guy. My love, I am not a poor page, but the son of the king of Moravia. What's wrong? Oh shucks, my beloved. Here, throw this costume on and get on stage and uh, I'll tell you what to do in a second. Don't worry, it's not a speaking part. <laughs> Thank God for that, I've seen this guy act. I want to play the warlock. And here's the really scary part. This play? Not supposed to be a comedy. The Prince of Moravia will never be a member of our royal family. I'd rather die. You got it, Pops. Now we will live happily, happily ever, ever after. after. But that's it? What the hell was the moral of that story? Kill people to get what you want? What the hell? Jesus, Bob, check the fuse box. Then for absolutely no reason, Adam starts following one of the actresses around backstage and tries to kill her with his prop weapons. I guess it's implied the magician cast a spell on him to do it, or there's an evil puppet that makes him do it, or the guy with the puzzle, or maybe the janitor with the tic-tac-toe board on his back. And I, I don't know. And yeah, he has a real functional bow and arrow. It's worth mentioning at this point that Adam is kind of stupid. I just don't know. The Lord forbade us to eat the fruits from this tree. Don't be a schmuck, Eve. Okay, so the apples on the tree are labeled Granny Smith apples. So when Adam was giving names to all the animals and plants on Earth, he named the apples Granny Smith apples and then hung a sign on the tree. Eve picks an apple so as not to be a schmuck, causing Adam to have flashbacks to his previous life in Canterbury. He remembers the poisoned apples and starts casting the old demonic spell, when suddenly a real snake appears and entangles Eve, killing her. Or at least that's what Adam sees, because he's probably nuts and seeing jester puppets everywhere. I just felt so damn helpless. 
There was an 18-year-old girl going into convulsions and dying of a heart attack before my very eyes. I am a nurse and there was nothing I could do about it. Yeah, it must have been rough being a trained nurse and not being able to do anything so, except like... fucking CPR! Adam keeps saying? insisting that he saw a deadly python kill the woman because, you know, it's easy to mistake that for a heart attack. But he doesn't really want to see a doctor about it. Well, how do we look? <laughs> well, since you asked. Ah! <laughs> You're so funny! <laughs> Maybe a psychologist would help. Oh, come on, Barbara. They're all full of bull. I, uh, I know a fortune teller. And I've been to her before, so I know she's good. Oh, yeah, psychologists are just bullshit. So let's call a fortune teller. That's hard science. So he goes to get a tarot reading and see if he can spot this cliche coming from a mile away. Of course he gets the death card. This causes him to go coconuts again, and he suddenly leaps forward and stabs her in the fucking throat! Oh, man! Well, I mean, come on. If she was any good as a fortune teller, she probably should have seen that coming. The next day, Adam just goes back to his D&D game, where the DM tells him they've been hired by a high-level wizard to assassinate a powerful female sorcerer who wears all white. And for some reason, Adam interprets this to mean he should go murder a nurse. I don't know, just roll with it. A sorceress dressed in white. Kill her! Kill her. Kill her. Go to the hall! Go to the hall! Don't stop, don't stop. Oh, Doctor, you're the best in this room at this time. Oh, oh no. What kind of shitty pillow talk? Who talks like that anyway? Wait, did she just fuck that guy wearing all of her underwear? Or did she just pull her panties on, like, at light speed? And what kind of fucking hospital hangs hacksaws on the wall? But there is no conclusive evidence. <gasps> if you have any information for 91... Doctor, you scared the wits out of me. And that was Curtis. Peg Heckler defeated Until next time, sweetheart. Okay, all right, what the hell? She fucked a doctor in a gorilla suit? God, I haven't been this disturbed since I saw a guy in a bear suit giving another dude a blowjob in The Shining. At least that scene kind of made sense in context. Remember when this movie used to be about a role-playing game and a satanic cult? Because, God, I think this plot train just jumped the fucking rails. And now here's the weather. Oh, right. I suppose I should take some time off from fucking Dr. Gorilla to give those dialysis patients their meds. The nurse goes wandering around the strangely empty hospital and grows terrified that someone's following her when she runs into Adam in disguise. You'd think she'd be smart enough to recognize the doctors that work on her floor, and that doctors don't commonly walk around the hospital with face masks on. But then this was the woman who just got done fucking a guy in a gorilla suit two minutes ago. After stabbing her in the brain with a pen, and really, I feel like I should be able to make a pen joke here, but I got nothing. What? Really? Dr. Gorilla's fucking someone in a supply closet now. It literally hasn't even been three minutes since he just railed the last nurse doggy style. This guy's a fucking machine. Who knew Furry's got this much pussy anyway? Man, I gotta get me a gorilla suit. And the fucking janitor is here too? What does this motherfucker work for every building in the fucking city? Is there any significance to the tic-tac-toe game in progress on his back? Is it meant to raise tension or be symbolic of anything? What is with the constant callbacks of the puzzle being built? What, if anything, does this have to do with Dungeons and Dragons? Does any of this mean anything? I think we all know the answer to that one. I just can't take this. This movie gets worse, if you can believe that. You know, I just thought of the Skullduggery drinking game. Every time there's a meaningless bullshit callback scene, take a shot. You know what? If we're going to get started, I need more booze. Get down. Where'd you come from anyway? One second. Are you hurt? Just my ego. Turn around, show me your ass. <laughs> Listen, you can't go out in public like this, but I could give you a ride. Yeah, I'll bet you could. Or maybe you already have someone who can clean you up. You know, granny, wife, nanny, girlfriend. Hmm. Not even a girlfriend. Well, I guess I'll have to take you home with me. I've seen slutty nurse pornos on Cinemax that didn't have this many slutty nurses in them.